We're gonna go over when you should lift naked and when you shouldn't lift naked. And we're gonna start, right? No. One of the worst things that weightlifters do is that they just put it on too soon. You know, they get into the room, they're not really warmed up well, and they just put it on. And it's one of those things that just drives me absolutely insane. And of course, I'm talking about a belt. One of the most annoying things that weightlifters do is that instead of lifting naked, they put on a belt even to hit their warm-up sets. And so one of those big questions is, when should we be lifting naked versus actually wearing a belt? And what does that belt even do? So we're gonna cover all these things to help you have a higher level of performance when you're naked. So first off, what is lifting naked? So if we look at it as lifting naked in theory is not being completely nude, but instead it's not using knee wraps or not using a belt. Now, for this specific video, we're not gonna talk about knee wraps. If you want that, just comment down below. We're gonna be talking about wearing a belt and what that belt actually does and when we should actually be using the belt. Now, when we look at what a belt is, okay, what the belt does, in this case, this sweet leather belt that Nat Aram from Hook Grip made for me personally, and this is going to provide a massive amount of support throughout our back and our abs. And we have to learn how to use it appropriately. We need to make sure we're filling our gut. We need to make sure that we feel like that tight soda can as we're squatting or as we're cleaning or as we're pulling off of the floor. That's what we want to use this belt for. It's something that we can use to optimize our bracing ability. Okay, when we optimize our bracing ability, now we can apply more force, which in turn is gonna help us hit a bigger snatch or hit a bigger clean and jerk. Even if we're looking at the dip of the jerk, if we're wearing a belt, it's gonna help us stay as vertical as possible. Okay, so looking at it through that lens is really, really important. Now, the next question is, what lifts should we be using our belts for? If we look at it for, if I'm snatching, in most cases, we really should not be using a belt. Now, there are some people that are world-class, they're the greatest lifters of all time that have snatched with belts on, that's okay. And there's a lot more people that have not. I recommend typically not snatching with a belt on, but if you struggle to feel tension in your trunk, in your abs, in your lower back, when you're pulling off the floor, by all means, you can try to wear your belt. Now, if we get into the clean and jerk, 100%, I believe you will add possibly up to 5%, maybe even more, if you're clean and jerking with a belt on. And the same would go for if you're jerking off boxes while you're nude, or if we're hitting that big heavy front squat or that big heavy back squat, I also recommend wearing the belt when you're doing heavy clean pulls. So the next question is, when should we stay naked? Okay, when should we not use a belt? When should we not use knee sleeves? Okay, typically when I'm looking at programming over a 16 to 20 week time frame, during the exposure phase or during the comprehension phase, that's when I would recommend staying away from the belt as much as possible. Trying to get as much volume done without the belt, and that even includes clean and jerking, that includes front squatting, that includes back squatting. The big question though is that as we improve and as we work through these phases, as we get through the ascension phase, the summit phase, and we're leading into a big peak during the realization phase, we know that we're gonna be competing with a belt. So during these phases, we should be lifting very heavy weights with a belt. But now we're gonna go into at what point during a workout should we actually put that belt on? So specific to each lift, if I looked at the clean and jerk, I like to try to train my athletes so that by the time they're at their last clean and jerk, if we were going to a competition, if we're at that last clean and jerk warm up, that's around the point where we're gonna put a belt on. That would be in competition. In training, I like to see if my athletes can get as high as possible without actually putting a belt on at all, or at least minimally. And in the case of someone like Haley Reichert, she's a world bronze medalist in the clean and jerk. This past performance at the Pan Am Championships, her last heavy day of clean and jerk, she actually clean and jerked 105 kilos, which was 92% of her last attempt on the platform, which was 113 kilos. Her last attempt was 113 kilos and she was able to clean and jerk 105 without a belt. The reason why I really like this is you get a sense of confidence. 
okay? And as a coach, you can understand that if your athlete is pulling around 85 to 90% of their max clean and jerk without a belt on, they're gonna feel more confident when they throw on the gear, okay? So then when they throw on the gear, they just feel a little bit of that extra oomph, right? They have that undescribed feeling, but really what that is, it's an increase on surface area around their abs, so they have better proprioception, they can brace a little bit better, and then as they get to closer, higher weights, now all of a sudden they have bigger confidence. So if they have bigger confidence, ideally they're going to hit those bigger weights. In the case of Haley, one of the big aspects that I really like to do, if I can push Haley to clean and jerk 107 or 108 kilos without a belt, then I know she's really in good shape to increase that overall load when she puts the belt on. Same thing with squats. If we're looking at back squats or front squats, I recommend doing your warm up sets in even two to three working sets without the belt. Then when you throw the belt on, you're going to feel that much more stable. Okay, we don't want this to become an issue of over-reliance. If we're constantly wearing that belt, we're taking away from our trunk control. And we know based off of past videos, we know that trunk control plays a major role on overall performance of the snatch and of the clean and jerk. If we are able to hit those big weights without the belt or squat big weights without the belt, that's gonna improve our strength in our back and in our abs. And then finally, one more aspect here that I like to use, and this is a little nugget that you guys can apply today to your training. And in the case again of Haley, she's hit jerks off of the boxes at 120 plus kilos. And that's while she's only weighing about 50 kilos. If you use a power jerk and then a split jerk, the power jerk starts to force you to focus on that trunk control, okay? And you do this while not wearing a belt. And then as you build heavier and heavier and heavier, and you're focusing on that very vertical dip and very vertical drive, as you get heavier, that is imprinted in your mechanics. And then when you put the belt on, now your body not only has a better dip, but the belt is providing better support so you have a better dip and drive. And one big aspect is that if you watch Haley hitting that big dip, she uses the belt to the absolute max. Okay, we don't wanna just put a belt on and stand there, here. We wanna put the belt on as we get set, fill up our entire belly, fill up our entire diaphragm, push into the belt to provide that support, and then use that to apply a massive amount of force into the barbell. So the big key factor here is understand that you wanna to get to about 85 to 90% of all of those major lifts, the clean and jerk, the back squat, the front squat, without a belt. It might be a little bit lower when we're looking at a front squat or a back squat, but at least two to three days a week, push these workouts without a belt as much as possible. Use the belt not as a crux, but use the belt as a way to optimize your performance. When you do this, and you're in the back room at a competition, and you're waiting and waiting and waiting to put that belt on, that's gonna help you with your confidence, but it's also gonna be an intimidation factor when your opponents are watching you warm up and you're hitting huge weights without even wearing that belt for support. So don't use the belt all the time. Lift naked as much as possible. Look at those numbers, 85 to 90%, especially the competitive movements, closer to 85 to 88% for those heavy strength movements. If you do have back issues or back problems, Obviously you need to improve your overall strength in those areas. You also need to be able to improve the overall mobility in those areas. And you can use that belt if you're leading into a competition to help you limp into that competition so that you can still perform at a high degree. If you guys need help with your overall performance, head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up one of our weightlifting programs to help you become an absolute freak. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.